Okay, I'm Mark Ducey. I'm, I head up the uh, UNH Forest Biometrics Lab, and the, uh, the title of my talk in the program is Lasers Not Just for the 25th Century. Um, I'm going to present today a little bit of the more flashy side of my research. We do a lot of different things in my lab. A lot of them are really practical, focused on the here and now. But one of the great things about research, from my perspective, is part of my job is to get way out ahead of the curve and see what's coming. And, uh, and so that's what I'm going to talk about today. Why do we even do forest biometrics research at all? Basically, forest biometrics is the field of work where we try and figure out what's going on in the woods. How do we do inventory? How do we assess our resources, whether it's at the state level all the way down to an individual stand that a, a forester might be managing for a landowner? At all those scales, whatever your client base is, sound management requires good information. It, Sometimes the information needs vary, but you got to know what's going on in the woods. Our research efforts in my lab um, target a whole range of end users from forest industry through government, through conservation organizations, as well as the rest of the research community. Um, and one of the good and bad things, because it gets tricky for me to sometimes find people to come work in my lab, is if we uh, look at the USDA, they've identified forest biometrics as a national needs area. So trying to, trying to in, in my lab, not just develop research results, but also turn out students who can go out there and fill those needs uh, across the country, really. So in my group, we kind of are focused across three major research themes, and each one of these themes are doing different things. A lot of the work that we do is, is meat and potatoes, you know, efficient sampling, measurement, inventory needs, using tools that any consulting forester would recognize, you know, DBH tape, a prism, just basic stuff. And that's a lot of fun, although often looking at some of the new things that are going on. You know, we're seeing a lot of continuing interest in biomass bioenergy resources. We're seeing a lot of interest in how to take advantage of the regulatory carbon mi markets like the California Air Resources Board market, and a lot of interest in forest structure for wildlife habitats. So we're doing a lot of things that aren't just how many board feet are in the woods, um, but that's, those are some of the things we're working on. Today, I'm going to focus on this, this middle theme, which is really the emerging technology side. What's coming along? How can we take advantage of it? And this is where we do get a little bit out in front of things. I like to tell my students, if we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be research. And so uh, some of the things we've tried have been successes, some, some less so. All right, the, the key flashy technology that I'm just going to give you a taste of today is this technology called terrestrial laser scanning. Sometimes we call it terrestrial LIDAR. Um, and uh, that's, that's a, this is a picture of our unit right here, not in New Hampshire. Um, to give you a sense of scale, that's that big, about the size of a shoebox. It's standing on an ordinary camera tripod, looks a lot like that one. Um, not exactly that one. We've got a little bit heavier duty, duty head on it. All it is, if you've ever used a laser pointer, or if, you, if you're a hunter or golfer, you may have used a laser range finder to find the range to something. Put that, point it at a mirror, the mirror spins around real fast, and a little computer and then the thing turns, kind of like R2-D2, it's pretty cool. I'd bring it here for show and tell, but I'd blind everybody. It's not quite eye safe at this range. So the thing spins around and in the space of a few minutes, collects position information on everything that the laser hits. About 40 million points in about five minutes and then it takes a photo so we can line up things. Uh, and we like to think of those, all those collections of points that the thing hits as, as a point cloud. If you just put it on the computer and plot it up, it <laughs> looks like a cloud um, until you tunnel in and start, start pulling it out. So it provides really detailed 3D data on physical objects. Now these were not developed to be used in the woods. The types of people who are using these operationally right now, high-end surveying, as-built surveys, people doing fancy construction work on offshore oil, oil platforms where you got to find if that pipe is 10 feet or 10 feet 0.01 inches. The accuracy on some of these units is really high. Forensics, crime scene documentation, again at the higher end because of the expense of these units. Um, so we're taking something that's been developed primarily for other fields and saying, well, what if we pointed that at a tree? And that's been uh, kind of an interesting adventure. 
okay? So just to give you a feel, instead of plotting up a blob that looks like a cloud, this is another way of looking at the data. This is a northern hardwood forest up on the White Mountain National Forest. This is what the scanner sees. And basically color here indicates distance from the scanner. So the red stuff is real close. The blue stuff is real far away. And I've put a little bit of texture in there based on how bright the laser reflection is so you can see stuff. This is not full resolution. I can't put full resolution on the screen. I can't put full resolution on the highest definition monitor I can put in my lab. Okay. The resolution here is good enough that for these hardwood trees, if I wanted to, I could tell you how big their leaves are. It's pretty amazingly detailed stuff. Um, for most of these trees out here, I can start to measure dimensions of things that as an ordinary field forester, I can't even reach. It's pretty cool. So what could you do with that? Well, there have been some ideas in the research community, a lot of them um, not necessarily developed by people with a practical bent, but these are the things that we're working on. For starters, more accurate tree and stand volumes. Most field foresters are using volume equations that have an error from stand to stand of plus or minus 25%. And with a DBH tape and a tree height measurement, you can't reduce that lower than that. Could we improve tree and stand volumes? Particularly looking at some of the resources that are not well quantified by the equations we use. Top wood, bioenergy. You know, for people like me, for 100 years, we've worked on board foot equations because that's what mattered. How many tons of biomass are up there on top of those board feet? Could we do that with this technology? Where we're doing permanent inventory plots, which is not the vogue in private industry in the States right now, but that's another story. Um, could we make mapping some of those plots a lot faster and easier? Uh, some of the things that you can't measure with a diameter tape, canopy structure, tree competition, can we quantify those sorts of things? Fuels, now in New Hampshire, we're lucky. Our stuff doesn't catch on fire quite so easy, although some people still remember 1947. Uh, but can we measure understory and, and fuel beds and those kinds of conditions? The counterpart, the other people who are using laser scanners are the people who want to mount them on airplanes and fly them around. 15 years ago, that was completely spooky. Now it's becoming almost, and in, for some organizations, is fully operational as a supplementary source of information to their forest inventory. Well, we're basically doing the same thing, putting it on a tripod and looking up. Can we get a better link between what the airplanes are seeing and what we're measuring on the ground? And here's one that we've really just started thinking about, but I think this may be eventually where the entry into a lot of forest industry comes down as so much more of our land base is owned by investment companies that expect auditable inventory. They expect their financial books to be auditable. They're going to expect their forest inventory to be auditable. And also in enforcement situations where documentation audibility is important. If a quick laser scan can essentially provide a permanent 3D record of what was around a measurement point. We can go back and check some of that stuff without ever leaving the office. It could dramatically reduce the cost of auditing, check cruising, evidentiary responsibility. You know, there's, there's some possibilities here. Now, yeah, on the other hand, are we going to do this today? No, I wouldn't tell anybody in this room unless you're a researcher, to run out and buy one of these. These things are expensive. Uh, the unit we're using now is a moderate five-digit number to buy it. Um, so yeah, that's stupid expensive for practical field forestry. On the other hand, you know, the, I told you the one we're using now fits there, goes there, one person can carry it, deploy it in the field. We can do a lot of work in 10 minutes. This is the one when we first started. There's somebody, you gotta use a, a laptop tethered to it. There's a generator over here powering everything. It's all cabled together. We gotta deploy targets in the woods to keep everything. So it took about three people and all day to do what we can do now with a scanner with one person in 10 minutes. By the way, that scanner costs twice as much. 
and didn't work very well. <laughs> okay? So if we stay on this curve, and because of the developments in other industries, automotive and so on, where these are coming in, we expect to, um, cost is going to come way down. I'm going to prognosticate that in five to ten years, a scanner will cost what we now think a pretty good digital camera costs, be about as big, and do what we do now in ten minutes in about one minute. At that point, for certain applications, you could afford to use it in the woods. We want to figure out how before that day gets here. Now, if we want to do something now, oh, we're having fun now too, because it's like, okay, we can't do that everywhere. I can't put my scanner everywhere I want to collect data in the woods. We've been having a lot of fun just putting an ordinary little laser range finder. Foresters, wildlife people are using these all the time anyway. A lot of them already have them. You could put it on a tripod or you could walk around and hold it and shoot it. And with that, fairly low cost of stuff that art people already have, there's certain applications that we can get comparable information from. And in fact, we've been testing that and it's working really well. In fact, this is what I think is going to give foresters that quick link to airborne LIDAR without going to a lot of fancy schmancy uh, you know, tools and software. The other thing we've been playing with uh, is using cameras. Uh, I should say, well, by playing, we're playing pretty hard. Uh, and I'd really call out a, a collaboration here between my group that's funded by the Ag Experiment Station and a partner group over in Norway involved with their national forest inventory. Some awfully smart people. When we put our heads together, we get a lot done really fast. You know, everybody's got a camera now. I got one right here. I don't know how to use my smartphone because it's smarter than me, but I, they tell me there's a camera on it, okay? <laughs> it turns out, and Google is spending a lot of money to de develop this technology, it turns out you can get a point cloud out of a bunch of photos. We've been able, using some of my colleagues in Norway's data, to take a bunch of photos and map a forest stand. And we're going to try that this spring as soon as the four feet or snow that just fell melts away. Uh, if we can do that, we could do some of this stuff with stuff you already own, literally with your phone, maybe a GoPro or something. All right? So to wrap up, one of the themes that we like to do, one of the things that we see as important in our mission is to look at emerging technology, try to get ahead of the curve. We're going to make some mistakes. Some stuff isn't going to work out. Hey, better we make that mistake than practitioners who have you know, more on the line in, in some ways. It lets us really leverage some of these external funds and partnerships. We can use this base information we get from the Ag Experiment Station to knock down bigger research grants that build things. It's been a lot of fun. For my lab, the tie back to eventual application, maybe not next year, maybe five years out, maybe 10 years out, is really where we're targeting this level of effort. So that's where I'll leave it. I, a lot of people I work with, a lot of people who have helped fund this, the Ag Experiment Station is really the foundation for what we're trying to do.